Hello, menopowered ladies. This is Menopause Taylor joining for you for the state of menopause in the world today. <laughs> menopower. I taught you about menopower and power in the last podcast because the last podcast was all about what gets better at menopause. We've been doing this wham series, wham, for what happens at menopause. And you've learned about a lot of things that get better at menopause. And on the flip side, this podcast is about what gets worse at menopause. Now, I've been covering a lot of stuff in these WAM series. I've been grouping things according to themes. And I've covered a lot about the symptoms of menopause in all these other WAM podcasts. So you already know that all of the following get worse at menopause in terms of symptoms. Your sleep, your energy, your memory, your mood, your cravings for alcohol, your skin, your hair, your weight, your vagina, your bladder, and your sex drive. So I'm not going to cover those again in this podcast because I just did that a few weeks ago. And if you're not watching these, I mean, if you're not listening to these in order, everything will get a lot worse at menopause <laughs> because this is an education that requires you to, to get the education in order. <laughs> but what I want to focus on today is on the disease risks they get worse at menopause. You see, most women focus on their short-term symptoms, but that's really missing the boat. The important stuff is the diseases. I often say hot flashes can't kill you, but heart attack can. So I'll present the diseases on which you need to focus and avoid at menopause. This one podcast, could literally save your life. Every woman you need to know needs to hear it. Okay, now, unlike any podcast I've done this far, I'm gonna address all six of the diseases for which menopause itself puts you at increased risk. So it gives you a broad overview of the things that can get really worse at menopause. There are six diseases I'll discuss. Heart attack, osteoporosis, breast cancer, uterine cancer, ovarian cancer, and Alzheimer's disease. First and most important by far is heart attack. You see, right there, you might realize that you were off track in which one is the most important. In a previous podcast, What Gets Harder at Menopause, I explained what happens to your heart arteries at menopause. In essence, when you lose your estrogen, your heart arteries begin to harden. The harder they get, the higher your risk for heart attack. And it just so happens that this is the most critical and life-threatening thing that happens at menopause. Unfortunately, most women are completely unaware of the fact that they should focus more on preventing a heart attack than on anything else. Heart attacks kill one out of two menopausal women. And there are two reasons that heart attacks are the biggest killer of menopausal women. First, most women don't even know that it's the biggest killer. And second, most women don't know the symptoms of a heart attack in a woman. They know the symptoms of a heart attack in men, but the symptoms of a heart attack in women are completely different than the symptoms of a heart attack in women. Women do not have crushing chest pain that radiates into their left arm. Men do. Women have jaw pain, neck pain, upper back pain, or no pain. And women may not even describe what they feel as pain. They tend to use the words tightness, aching, pressure, and indigestion. Here's the other problem. Public awareness focuses much more heavily on breast cancer than it does on heart attack. More fundraising goes toward breast cancer than towards heart attacks. More research is dedicated to breast cancer than to heart attacks. So most women have a completely upside down perception of what's important. 
heart attack is the most likely thing to kill you at menopause. So when it comes to your chest, what's on the inside is much more important than what's on the outside. Heart attack is the worst thing about menopause and heart disease is the most likely thing to get worse at menopause. Heart attack is number one. Now for osteoporosis. This is another disease that worsens at menopause and directly because of postmenopause. And it's another disease for which women are woefully misinformed. Osteoporosis is much more significant than breast cancer in terms of how many women are at risk and how many will actually get osteoporosis. One out of four women will suffer a fracture due to osteoporosis. And of the one out of four, 20% will die from a complication. Of the survivors, 50% will require assisted living or home health care. See, just those numbers should have you saying, holy cow, that's a lot of women. Add to that, the fact that women have the misconception that they can prevent osteoporosis by taking calcium and you compound the problem enormously. Add to that the misconception that dairy products contain a lot of calcium and you compound the problem exponentially. Do you see why this podcast is so important? I have taught you in numerous podcasts that osteoporosis is due to estrogen loss, period. Osteoporosis is bone loss and it's due to estrogen loss. So estrogen loss equals bone loss. Calcium has absolutely nothing to do with causing it or preventing it. Calcium has to do with bone strength, not bone loss. So Estrogen determines bone quantity. Calcium determines bone quality. But most women are under the illusion that they can take calcium and prevent osteoporosis. That is not true. And women who ingest dairy to get their calcium to prevent osteoporosis are at the very highest risk. For so the absolute worst thing at menopause is a heart attack, and the second worst thing is osteoporosis. Why? Because they're so common, and women don't know about them. They don't know what to expect. They don't know what's going on. They don't know why, and they don't associate them with losing their estrogen. So now we turn our attention to breast cancer. This is not the worst disease at menopause. It is not the most important disease on which to focus. Here are the statistics. Your risk of even getting breast cancer over the course of your entire lifetime is one in seven. But your risk does not get near one in seven until you are 81 years old. And that's because your breast cancer risk increases with age. So if you break down your risk by age, it looks like this. From age 30 to 40, one out of every 252 women get breast cancer. From age 41 to 50, one out of every 68 women get breast cancer. From age 51 to 60, one out of every 35 women get breast cancer. From age 61 to 70, one out of every 27 women gets breast cancer. From age 71 to 80, one out of every 25 women gets breast cancer. And from age 81 to 90, one out of seven women gets breast cancer. So if you compare your risk of ever getting breast cancer with your risk of having a heart attack or a fracture from osteoporosis, Here's what you get. Heart attack is one out of two. Osteoporosis is one out of four. And breast cancer is one out of seven.
but only if you live to 81. Do you see why women's fears are so misplaced? Now, I'm not saying that these risks are the same for everyone, and I'm not saying that breast cancer is not a big deal if you get it, but the fact is that breast cancer is less likely to kill you than either heart attack or osteoporosis. Heart attack kills one out of five out of two women who have a heart attack. Osteoporosis kills one out of five women who get osteoporosis. Breast cancer kills one out of 29 women who get breast cancer. And here's the other thing. Breast cancer is curable. That's probably why you know more women who've had breast cancer than you do women who have had heart attacks. The breast cancer victims survive. The heart attack victims don't. So much more money is raised for breast cancer than any other disease. And that's good, but it's also misleading in terms of what's worse at menopause. And most women have their focus all wrong. Despite all that money, we still don't have the cure for breast cancer. And the vast majority of women who get breast cancer still do survive. See, my goal is to put some perspective on these things. It's not my intention to, to belittle any disease. But when women learn any of these statistics, they just are so shocked at how misled they have been by everything around them, everybody around them. And they had no idea that they were focusing on all the wrong diseases. So next is uterine cancer. Now, women don't talk much about uterine cancer. But that's kind of odd because uterine cancer is by far the most common female gynecologic cancer. Now, when I say it's common, what kind of numbers do you imagine? You see, most people hate statistics because they find them confusing. I like to put them in the simplest terms that I can. So the statistics for uterine cancer are that 3.6% of women will get uterine cancer. 3.6%. That is one out of 29. And 1.9% will die from it. Well, that translates to about one in 45. So if we compare how many women get each of these diseases, the numbers would be as follows. 50% of women will have a heart attack. 25% of women will have fractures from osteoporosis. 14% of women will get breast cancer and 3.6% of women will get uterine cancer. Do you see how different those numbers are? That means that uterine cancer is not common. And as I've taught you in previous podcasts, it's very easy to prevent. You see, uterine cancer tends to get mixed in with cervical cancer. And I've taught you in previous podcasts that your cervix is your, the door to your uterus. But the two structures are completely different. Here's an analogy. Your mouth is the door to your esophagus. But if you get mouth cancer, it does not mean you have esophageal cancer. Or if you want to use an analogy other than cancer, your hand is connected to your arm. But if you break your hand, it doesn't mean that you broke your arm. So uterine cancer and cervical cancer are two completely different animals. Cervical cancer is more common in young women. Uterine cancer is more common in older women. So your risk for uterine cancer gets worse at menopause, but your risk for cervical cancer does not. That's why I include uterine cancer in the six diseases associated with menopause. And once again, most women have all their facts wrong about uterine cancer. I did a podcast on comparison between uterine cancer and breast cancer a while back, and I compared them with regard 